Well, everyone, welcome to our third event here in Australia. We are coming to you, well, not live, but we are currently in a live environment in Sydney with a lovely audience. Everyone, give yourselves a round of applause. We did say this off camera, but I'm happy to repeat it. We like this audience the most because they are just mad. They sold out this event in record time, Tony. I think literally tickets for this event sold out in about 48 hours to the point where everyone outside who didn't get a ticket was raging. Fuming. I had people really pissed off. Why haven't you got more tickets? Why aren't there more seats? I looked inside, you can fit more seats. I was like, bloody hell, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, why, well, why didn't we do more then? Well, I'm going to gonna blame the lovely Stash because currently we are sitting in, I think, one of the best car storage facilities genuinely I've been to in the world. This place is stunning. It is huge, but it is full of some of the most amazing and expensive metal. And understandably, they didn't want our grubby fans coming in here and ogling over stuff and trying to peek around and hurl abuse at you, Tony. So we capped the audience to a very... A very beautiful and intimate group, which they I they wouldn't even let me walk around. No, said, no, no, you're not walking around. Have you seen you? I, I wouldn't let you. Walk no, I mean it's eight thirty. I mean I've been up all day. I mean I look a bit, a little bit ropey now. I bet. Man, no. you should see you in the morning. You look even more ropey. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this incredible venue is, yes, the host to our third event here in Australia. And yes, those of you at home will see. There is a challenge Sridhar behind me. I mean, this is a welcome that I like to have in Australia and our live podcast events. It's not just. Not just any challenge, Stradali. Uh, Long-term views of the channel will know that I filmed this very car. It was for sale in Amari Supercars in the UK a few years ago. Originally a car from Singapore, made its way back here to Australia and is now being stored uh, here at Stash. It's an, it's an amazing, amazing venue. And it's full. I was going to do like a whole plug for them to be like, if you're interested in storing your car, they're like, we don't need it. We are full. So it's full up. <laughs> they've just been legends to, to host us. Uh, we also have to give another sort of quick plug to our, our tour partner, Latham Steel Door. Some of you crazy people attacked one of their doors with a sledgehammer earlier. Uh, good on you. I thought um, an event door had turned up. You thought an event door yeah. had turned up? It's been hell. At one point, I thought, what's that noise? Just a load of banging. You were like, Literally, oh, yeah. okay, well, good shout. Get the life out of me. <laughs> uh, if you are someone like uh, Stash, if you're a, a dealer like Tony, if you have a business that needs steel security doors, or you're just terrified of the kangaroos breaking into your home, Latham Steel Security Doors <laughs> could be the ones for you. Uh, they offer a huge range of different security doors. You actually had some installed genuinely Literally, yeah. on your unit in yeah. the UK. Um, Eddie Hall, the world's strongest man, tried to break through one of the doors. He failed. So and me. And Tony did as well. Yeah, yeah. And I had to go. So any of you who gave it a try, uh, it you was in vain. Yeah. <laughs> With them arms. <laughs> I'm surprised they keep you up. Uh, I mean, you want an arm wrestle? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I would definitely lose. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, Latham's are offering a, a discount, 5% discount for any customers uh, or supporters of the podcast. So BTG5, uh, they're obviously available here in Australia and also in the UK. Uh, genuinely worth checking out, as I say, whether you're a business owner or a homeowner that just wants that added uh, security. They do offer the best in the business and we're very grateful to have them as part of this trip. Uh, anyway, should we get started with, well, potentially our favourite section of the podcast at these live events, the Rate My Ride section. Now, I think today we've had the most varied cars in the car park you've seen well did you not have a walk around no it's pouring rain oh. <laughs> well you're you're a pathetic man i had, oh. a, I had a wander around did you see the brewster the 911 speedster the brewster green one no oh mate there's some proper bits of kit there was a whole other car park at the back no i haven't seen them there was one of my new favorite cars the i30n sedan he's absolutely obsessed oh, obsessed with, that car. with these things what's all that about we don't get them in the uk they keep driving past us on the highway or whatever you call it and i'm like oh my god it's amazing he can't believe that i like it so much beautiful car anyone got an i30n sedan Saloon. Yeah, someone in the back. I love you, mate. Can you take me for a ride afterwards? Oh, my Let's God. Go somewhere. That's amazing. What Don't a take him. You won't get rid of him. Yeah. <laughs> I picked him up five years ago. He's still here. <laughs> Promoting your business every week. Anyway, uh, let's kick things off with Anthony, who submitted his 1989 Subaru Impreza WRX STI with the gold wheels, parked in a primary spot outside. Anthony, where are you? Hands up. At the back. Could we get the microphone slowly over to you, Anthony? So just pass it along. It's like a hot potato. Move it along towards Anthony, please. Now, we think we've worked out that JDM stuff, well, maybe not now because the values are going insane, but it's almost the thing to have in Australia, right? They seem to be the more affordable choice, as we know, around the world. You can tune them. You can modify them. This looks relatively stock. I I is it stock? Completely stock, yes. 
Completely stopped. I feel that's super rare for an Impreza to be completely stopped. Really cool. And what is that? 280 horsepower, something like that? 208 kilowatts. So, yeah, no idea. Probably about that. <laughs> what, I, I, is, what is a kilowatt? It's pretty close to 280. 280 horsepower. I mean, it's similar. I'm quite good at this, aren't I? Yeah. And, and uh, it's, it's just an STI. Is it an STI? CI version 6, we got 400 in... If you just hold the microphone very close to your mouth, please, that will avoid it. STI version 6, we got 400 into Australia, and that's one of them, and it's got 45,000 Ks. Fair. 45,000 Ks. I mean, it's beautiful. It's immaculate. Uh, And you kept a stock. Is it a sort of collector's item, or you actually drive it and enjoy it? It gets driven, um, but looked after well, so... It's it's beautiful. It's immaculate. I'm glad we saw it because I say it feels to me like the JDM scene is is well the scene that probably is the one to be in. Yeah, here I in mean, Australia. I mean, I can't places. really go in on you on that. To be fair, because I used to have one. So, <laughs> I mean, it's quite a good car. <laughs> is that the wireless microphone that's vibrating? I think we're going to keep passing the microphone around. If you are talking into it, just talk nice and loudly into it. You might not hear it out of the speakers, but we're recording it. So just a, a note. But yeah, Anthony, thank you so much for bringing that. Really stunning to see. Great s- name as well. Anthony. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Smell like you. It is your name. I forgot for a second. I genuinely forgot. I was like, what? Are you? what? You're just Tony. Yeah. Uh, oh, now this. Can you see? It's a very small photo. Now, this was submitted by Barbara. But I don't, think, I don't think Barbara got out of the car, unless I'm wrong. Where is he? This is a 19... <laughs> this is a 1969 Canstall Clubman. Barbara, are you here? There's Barbara! Oh, There's Barbara! Good oh. to see you. Can we, can we try and get the microphone to Barbara? Yeah, if we pass along. So, Barbara, if you can talk into the microphone and say... Well, we are recording you, so don't worry if you can't hear yourself. It's not mine, it's my partner's. Oh, well, I want it to be yours, Barbara. Can't we pretend? Unfortunately, I drive a Porsche, rather drive a Porsche. She drives a Porsche? (laughs) Is it his car or her car? It's his car. Right. She drives a Porsche. Well, take one of your your cans off. She's got better better taste than him, then. (laughs) (laughs) So, Barbara's partner, what is your name? Steve. Steve. So, Tony, don't, you can't, can't have a go. Tony or Tony? No, no, no. Fucking <laughs> say, Tony? Yeah, Tony. That's it, yeah. yeah. You can't have a go at me because I'm older than you, mate, right? So you've got to respect your elders. Thank you. Well said. Well said. Not much older than me, I have to say. Yeah. Um, so, Steve, in the email you mentioned that this was built by yourselves? Correct. Looks so... like it. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Sam, I want a bit of respect, mate. Because you're old. Have you lost your eyesight? (laughs) (laughs) So now tell us everything, because we drove an Elfin uh, last week, which was claimed to be the Australian Caterham, but this obviously is labelled as a 1969 car. So was this this an Australian Caterham back in the day? No, so this is around about the same time. So it's uh, a, a company in Sydney that made the bodies and basically it's sitting on Spitfire Herald... Um, oh, it's a Triumph. Sh- yeah, Triumph. Oh, I thought it meant the plane. <laughs> so flipping out. It looks and, old. And with a with a with a Cortina engine. And a court. So it's a Triumph with a Cortina engine and an Australian chassis or body or both. Body. 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 Oh, so you- it's all it's all the like Spitfire running gear. All the best bits, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, you should have stuck to it being Barbara's. I mean. It, it, you- <laughs> You stuck yourself the biggest it'd hole. It'd be no good for Tony because it's not PDK. So it's you'd be okay, PDK. Sam, you could drive it because it's manual. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he wouldn't know what he's doing. That's well, the problem. No. Yeah, yeah. I could give you a little bit of information. I've seen him drive a manual and he crunches gears all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> There's such a thing on YouTube called edit. And that's what he does all the time. Well, Barbara and Steve, thank you for bringing it. It's uh, definitely a highlight, at least for this Rate My Ride section. So thank you very much. Um, Moving on. uh, Cameron has bought a very predictable behind-the-glass Behind the glass live car. It's a 718 manual Cayman GTS. Cameron, where are you? Oh, down here at the front. This is an absolute stunner in the gentian blue, I do believe. Mm-hmm. We're just so fat. We're just big fans of these. We drove the uh, Boxster GTS yep. 4.0. This is a 4.0 or is the little engine? 4.0. 4.0. Perfect. We said that this is probably one of the best cars for this country. Alongside the JDM stuff, this kind of car, M2, 718 Cayman, the GTS stuff. It just feels appropriate power, right? Because all of you are going to get shot if you go over the speed limit. So at least this is sort of exploitable. 
Yeah, no, I'd agree. I, think, I, I mean, out here, I don't think your speed limits are quite as strict, are they, as uh, Victoria? Victoria. But even so, I, for the roads and, f you know, for what it does, I think this, it's a perfect power. How it's long have you had car. the car? Uh, about four months. About four months. Do you have a Porsche before? This is the first Porsche. No, first one. First one. Took, eight, for took life. 18 months to get here, so. Took about eight months. That's quick. No, so. 18 months. <laughs> oh, 18 months. That's about right. <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats. It's a stunner. Thank you for bringing it today. Thank you. Oh, my God. Now, <laughs> did you see this? Greg and his 99 Dodge Viper, which turned up. I don't know if it turned up with an umbrella on, but it definitely wore an umbrella in the car park. Where's Greg? Greg? Are you here? Oh, he yeah. did. <laughs> he was so reluctant to put up his hand. He was like, do I do this? What am I signing myself up for? Now, I'm a fan, Greg. I think this is super cool. I've always liked the Vipers. I, I have always liked the Viper. I think they're mega. So what this has got a huge engine, right? Let's get the microphone over to you. So big, the bonnet's up. <laughs> I think he was cooling it down here. What was that up the bonnet? What's happened there? I was I was just showing someone the engine. Okay, it was little. <laughs> Nothing broken. <laughs> You've got the deepest voice I've ever heard. <laughs> but now, I'm not going to say anything bad about you. You're going to beat me up. <laughs> it's a lovely I'm car, Greg. Well done. Good night. <laughs> so come on, give us the liters then. What 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 size is this engine? Uh, it's, a, it's a Gen 2, so it has an 8-litre V10 in it. An 8-litre V10 putting out 150 horsepower? <laughs> <laughs> um, the Gen 2s have about 450. Okay. From yeah. an 8 litre. Yeah. <laughs> Flipping hell. Uh, I was going to give him that. I was going to give him that. That Cayman's got more. <laughs> it's got just under 700. These things are cool, right? Is this, so this is a US import, yeah. I guess? It is. They were never sold here, right? This is... That's correct. Yeah, I think that's super cool. It's got personality, it's got character. Does it does it work? Does it Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. very simple car. There's very no electronics. Car. It's just, just a hammer an engine and a yeah, chassis, and that's it. I, I it's think it's very cool. Life. We never drove a Viper in America. Well, I think Barbara's catering's faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you've done there, boy. It's it's more about the talk on did, the Vipers. Did sorry? It's more about the talk. More about the talk. Yeah. Okay. Is it, is it just low down like seven. your voice or? Yeah. <laughs> it is. Hi. <clears throat> did, you, did you have to use the umbrella because you left the roof at home or the roof is hard to put on? <laughs> That's correct. I left the roof at home. <laughs> You committed. Look, I love it. Thank you for bringing it. I, I think it's super, super cool. And as I said, to see it in the car park with the umbrella one just made me smile. So I appreciate that. Well done, Greg. Um, now, Jack. I'll be honest, Jack. I wouldn't have included this, but it's brown on brown. It's a 2004 MX-5, and he put titanium edition. <laughs> Jack, 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 where are you? Jack, yes, mate. Let's get the microphone over to Jack. Now, we often say this on the podcast, when everyone, whenever anyone adds a long, a load of words to the name of their car, it's because it's fundamentally quite crap and they're trying to make it sound better. <laughs> so what, what was the titanium edition? Yeah, it's not brown. It's not brown? It's titanium. <laughs> well, it looks very brown in this photo. The seats are brown. Yes. Okay, well, yep. I will give you that. So that's it. The titanium edition was just that it was titanium. Yeah, they, they brought a lot of MX-5s into Australia, and this is NB, so it's right at the, it's a 04, right at the end of the NBs, and they were trying to sell them. I think the NC had been announced, and they were literally just trying to sell them. Just off. trying so to they, flock them. They did special editions with some boring silver. It's the most boring car out there, by far. Ah, okay, you're even slating it yourself. Is, <laughs> <laughs> do, do you need me here? Awesome. Awesome. Is, that, is that to get ahead of what Tony might say, or just because yeah. you're not a fan in general? No, no, it's that. That's the Aussie way. Slate yourself. Ah, uh, slate yourself. Okay, fine. Well, I'm going to talk you up. It's got brown seats, which I'm a fan of. I think paint it brown. It could be cooler. And, you know, because, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think get a new car. <laughs> that's what I think. We, um, we often tell this story. We can tell it publicly now. We had a guy that we knew who bought the incredibly rare 570 GT black edition. And when we said, oh, amazing, like, what is it? He went, it's black. Okay, oh, cool. um, I feel like you've been scammed in the same way, but it's uh, we like an MX-5, so thank you so much for bringing it along. Uh, keeping it within the BTG Live family, we've got Matthew and his 718 Spider, Spider also in Gentian Blue. Uh, we were chatting earlier, Matthew, I think. Where have you gone? At the back there, you've also got a 964 and a McCann, right? 
Flip, you know, he's yeah, got a few quid. He's got a few quid, yeah. In Australia, that makes you a billionaire. Um, I just can't sell them. You can't sell them, okay. Speak to Tony. Uh, Welcome to the club. Is, is the spider PDK a manual? It is a manual. I know you guys are going to go in me for that, but well, um, I, I went the manual because they're very limited now in last days sort of thing, so I couldn't uh, uh, not get the manual. And no, no, I think the spider. spider, I think the manual is the one to have, I have to say. I think the spider, the GT4, I think PDK maybe, but the, the spider, I definitely think the manual. I just wondered because obviously you've got the 964, I thought maybe you might change it up with the... With the spider, but yeah, we're we're big fans of the seven eighteen spiders, aren't we? In general, why have you got a bow around it? What's, what's up with that? <laughs> In the photo, that, he's got a bow and some flowers. So, mate, that was the only photo I had of it when I first got it. Was it for you or your wife? Well, no, my wife's holding the flowers in the picture. So She's that's actually she not in the picture. The car's got the flowers <laughs> resting on it. <laughs> Dug yourself a hole there. Uh, that's yeah. how they. That's how they deliver cars. In this, you should take note, mate. Yeah. Look at this: a big bow on it, flowers. You just go, oh, there's the car, take it, piss off. <laughs> Can you imagine if he turned up with a bow? And the f <laughs> thingy with the viper, and you put a bow around his <laughs> car, he'd shoot you. Greg. He goes, thank you. Oh, there's a bug, mate, there's a bug. Uh, that, uh, mate, you're going to have to go A&E. Yeah, I will. There was a red ant on Tony's car earlier. You should have seen him. He literally was like there was a crocodile in the car with him. <laughs> Panic attack for days. Um, anyway, thank you so much for bringing the... Well, you didn't bring, did you bring the 718 or did you bring the 964? No, I left the 718 at home because of the rain. So you left the 718 at home because of the rain? Flipping out. You're hell. worse than the Gold Coast. You, you only the Gold Coast were like, rain was acid. They literally... Well, we were going to come, but then it rained. I was like, what's wrong no, with you all? There's How no point we... driving that car with the uh, soft top up. Yeah, yes, half made a good point. Okay, let's move on. How do we, <laughs> how do we know you just haven't gone past the pool sticker or took a picture of someone's car? <laughs> Genius if that's what you've done. Like, actually genius. That's what he's done. Great way to get included. Um, Barbara's new car. It's <laughs> 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 uh, Mitchell. Mitchell with the Lancia Delta Integrale. This was parked out front as well. This was a beautiful car. He had a few wolf whistles there. Who's that? Uh, Mitchell's obviously a good-looking guy. Here he is. Uh, let's get the microphone down to Mitchell. Now, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, but Euro classics like this, we've seen hardly any, if I'm honest. This seems like a, like a genius choice. So how did you find the car and how long have you had it? So it's actually an old man's. Good um, on him. Came out of Japan probably six years ago. Okay. Uh, it's on 22,000 Ks, so low Ks. Doesn't get driven very often. Um, Italian, so the wipers weren't working today, so we couldn't bring it. <laughs> it's a. Oh, so this isn't the one parked out front. No, different cars. Oh, so there's yeah. two Integrales. Well, that well, turned up to the. That event. was going yeah, to be. Yeah, but your wife no, has bought the GR Corolla today. GR Corolla. Yeah, you know, like we don't get those. No, and that's it's a, cool. It's a Marizo edition. It's so a it's what? Got, it's got no. Is it a titanium seat. edition? Or yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was waiting for a comment. No, so it's got no back seats, stickier tires, forged carbon roof. And a little so bit more with no back seats. Yeah, it's got no back seats. <laughs> well, I, even I think that's a bit pointless. What the? It's, it's got four doors. So. It's got four doors and no back seats. No back seats. Seat. <laughs> well, it's no different to a project eight. Man. No, you it's a project eight. You can choose with back seats. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to have back seats. You can have a roll cage or back seats. Yeah, you can make the choice. You can. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Cool story. Should we but move people, on? People. Some people don't have. Back seats They're have idiots. a cage. They're idiots. They're complete idiots. Complete twats. Like GT3 yeah. with a cage. What's the point? No. Anyway, um, so <laughs> how I, I love the integrality. How's the GR Corolla? So much fun. Do you wish you'd got a Yaris? We had one as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> you have one or you had one? Had one. Okay, so is the Corolla a noticeable step up or different? I haven't driven it all that much. So okay. I can't Dad, is it is it massively different? The he hasn't driven it much either. Okay, no one's driving the Corolla. <laughs> no one likes the Corolla. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you so much, anyway, for bringing another very cool car and for at least submitting the, the Delta Integral. It's beautiful to see. I just love the shape of those. Um, now, again, you know, we are predictable when it comes to our audience. Uh, 992 Touring, GT3 Touring. This was Paul. Paul with the 992 Touring. Uh, oh, right at the back. Now, Paul, you sent me one of the emails, which I love and dread at the same time, because it went on for a very long time listing all the things that were special about your car. Um, <laughs> let's get the microphone back, because I do genuinely read them, but I'm like, how am I going to get any of this past Tony? Um, so 
I'll let you attempt to get in as many things as you can until he starts berating you. So why is this touring more special than ours? Go. It doesn't have a dinner table at the back. It doesn't have a, okay, it doesn't have a wing on the back. Okay, you've already beaten us. But spec-wise, you mentioned a few things. It's got a few special options. It does. Um, so I'm, I'm part of a car group, and so we've got a, a door seal customized by Porsche. Custom has, door seal. Yeah, which has motorhead drives on it. Oh, I've um, lost the will to live. <laughs> <laughs> have, have Come on, of, mate, it's nine o'clock at night. Flipping hell, leave me alone. Have all of the club got the door sill? Say that again. Have, has all the sort of group got the same door sill? No, no, just me. Just you? Just me. <laughs> so you're leading the way for the group, eh? That's it, that's it. You need a door sill to join the group. What else? Let me, give me one more thing. I'll let you get away with one more before Tony really gets pissed off. Uh, that's about it. What's the colour? No, that, that, you know, it's, um, it's Arctic Grey. Oh, is PTS, that a PTS colour? No, it did. it's not PTS. Oh. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's factory. Um, okay, your email seemed longer than it was. Look, it's beautiful. I love it. I adore it. You've got the tan leather. Tan leather, Cohiba brown interior. I um, look forward to the next person in your group buying the car because obviously anyone else is going to be like, what's this door sill? <laughs> um, but it, anyway, it's beautiful. Did you bring it today? Is it in the yes, car park? Yes, it's in the car park. Amazing. We're big fans. So thank Good you so much. Now, Simon and your 997 manual 997TT, heavily modified, I think you put in the email. Here he is, right in the middle. Uh, let's get the microphone down towards you. So am I right? Did you put in the email, heavily modified? Uh, ah, not stock. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it you've got big old wheels on there. So this is this a 997 Turbo? Yes, it's one of the last manual ones, probably the, the last Series 1 manual turbo delivered to Australia. Amazing. And then what, what have you added to it? Is it cosmetic changes or you've tweaked it a bit? A bit of both, a little okay. bit. Just fettled with it, improved yeah, it slightly. Yeah, it's got GT2 RS inner coolers and um, a Euro pipe, which is an Inconel, like Belgian-made pipe, plus a tune, plus a clutch, plus Olens, plus a few other bits and pieces. So you've ruined it. <laughs> if, if you know, I if mean, you you've know, literally ruined it. If you know me, that's what I do. Ruin cars. You ruin cars, that's your thing? That's my thing. You and Paul Wallace would be best friends. <laughs> Uh, you've done quite well over the years. I've done very well. well, but not as near as well as Paul. Um, oh, look, I, like, I think the 997 generation is starting to creep into that, being a car that people want to get and tweak, and because it's borderline affordable in the UK, it's probably a little bit better than 996, or you're going to say it's still a hunk of junk? Uh, no, it's better than the 996. Yeah, so I mean, as a platform, Chlamydia it's better than the 996. Chlamydia is better than the 996, was the comment. <laughs> I thought some of you might have missed that. Anyway, I think it's cool. And the fact you've made it yours is what I enjoy. You Tony will happily berate you, but I think that's the whole point. And that's the fun with cars is to, is to make them your own, whatever that means. So thank you for bringing it. That was parked out front, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It had presence. So thank it's you so much. Not a display. Um, we're just going to come down. Now, did this turn up? If it did, what a legend. It's pretty, isn't it? Tony, mm -hmm. with your night. No, not you, mate. Oh. 1976 Ferrari 365BB. <gasps> Tony, let's get the microphone to Tony. You came in this today, Tony? Oh my God, now this is a car. This is a car. So there's obviously a 2.7 RS just here, beautiful looking thing. I guess this was kind of not necessarily a direct rival, but a similar timeline, only three years or so later. I've been in one of these. It's a handful of a car, huh? It sure is. It's a bit wild. So you came in the rain thinking, oh shit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. How long have you had the car? Uh, I only took custody of it in March, but I chased it for 15 years. 15 years? Yeah, it's one of you... six ever delivered to Australia. You don't look old enough, so well done. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and it's one of 88 ever made in right-hand drive. Unbelievable. It's a real aggro thing because obviously 512BB has more of a reputation. 365 obviously is sort of mid-engine Daytona. like, But just aggy and edgy, right? It's got that boxy engine. It's... Get up and go. It's very angry, yeah. You don't it's look that old. That's I mean, what I'm that, saying. It's really rare, mate, for someone to have such a pile of shit and be that young. <laughs> you have so much? No, no, no. I mean, I, I, I applaud you for it. I mean, fair play to you, but why would you do that to yourself? What's the, what's the daily? What's the daily, Tony? Uh, I've got an X3M competition as the daily. But yes. The, um, the 365 sits in the garage next to the 355 Spider. Oh, he's got oh, a few quid. God, you're literally the Australian me. Do you work in a bank? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Tony bug, huge bug. Is that going to kill us? Yeah. What? Who said yes? Yeah. Twice. Why are you all laughing? It's not funny. Fucking <laughs> hell. I'm freaking out now, guys. If that, if, will that jump? Yeah. Everyone's giving me mixed answers and it stuts me out. What is it? Why is he running away? 
DJ, don't move away. You've got to stay close and stamp on it if it comes at me. Okay, right. I'm now not going to be paying attention to anything else apart from this psycho. Shoo, shoo. Shoo, shoo. Oh, my God. Well, look, Tony, thank you so much for bringing, I think, maybe my favourite car that's turned up I today. Mean, he's done well there. He's done very well. As you say, he's clearly so rich. So thank you for gracing us with your presence. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, last couple we're going to include from the photos. Uh, Yoon with the GT4 RS. Beautiful car. Are you part of the car club? Are you part of the WhatsApp group? Yoon with the GT4 RS? Yeah, you're part of the group, aren't you? Yes, good man. Um, you guys are absolute legends. There's a stunning spec, by the way, uh, with the gold wheels. Really, really nice. There's a few 4 RSs in the car park, actually. Where's Yoon, then? He's just at the back, the ne back, next to the GT2, next to the tour. Next to Paul. There's, how many of you in that group? There's about 300. Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, you've all got very nice cars, so well done. The bug is crawling away. Uh, no, shh, piss. Oh, mate, jog on. Jog on. Okay, so... Oh. No, I don't want to crush it. That's not very... That's not a stash thing to do. Is it your resident bug stash, guys? Finish it. Finish him. No, if he crawls up the chair, I really will run. Scream like a girl. Now, last one I really want to include, which just seems like an unbelievably special car. Have you seen this, Tony? Stop looking at your feet. Don't get distracted. Have you seen this? I saw it. So, Zaki with the Peugeot 205 Rally. We've got a hand for Zaki. Over here. Come on, let's get the mic. So, this is a legit, what, 19, what year is this? The original Peugeot 205 Rally car. Have we got the microphone over to Zaki yet? Where's the mic? It's coming over to you. Thank you so much. Nice. So, tell us everything because you do not look old enough to drive. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a 1991. Uh, it's got. 1.6 GTI engine in it. And um, there's this thing in Sydney where if you're age 13 to 16, you can learn how to drive. It's called Motocana and you can, you they teach you how to rally, that you can go in car parks and like tracks and everything. So yeah, it's good. And you're doing yeah. it in a 205 <laughs> rally? Yeah. Oh my God, can we get out of the applause? <laughs> now, Zaki, we should be mates. Let's get a beer after this. Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> He's 13. I know. Zaki's dad, where are you? Is that Zaki? I mean, you've smashed it, mate. I mean, that's because I, Zaki, I doubt you bought the car. Maybe you did. Did you buy it? No, you did. Zaki's dad, well done. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was a lockdown project. So we did a it together. A lockdown project. This is so cool. Though. I mean, what, did anyone else know about that ruling or that thing? Everyone's nodding their head. No, a few people are shaking their head. Um, well, if you're. Circa that age, get yourself signed up because that sounds absolutely outrageous. And what a cool car. So, did you restore this or build this? Or, uh, bought for Guy, and um, we just did it up over lockdown. And it's beautiful, got, it looks immaculate. It must be a ton of fun to drive, huh? Oh, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, it's brilliant. We love it. Yeah. There's an old boy who lives and right next to me who drives a yellow one of these around near my we've house. We only there. spent, like, all together, including buying the car, we spent less than two and a half thousand dollars, like, doing it. So. Oh, wow. my. And if you see this car, guys, it's immaculate. Oh, brilliant. What a project. Absolutely awesome. And I love the father-son thing. So, yeah, very, very cool. And, um, well, he's screwed, because where did he go from here? Zaki, you're in trouble now. Actually, he'll be buying 365 PPs before you know it, clearly. So, um, yeah, very, very cool to see you. Thank you so much. Um, now, did anyone bring something that they were desperate for Tony to, to speak about? Yeah, no. Oh, wow. Someone's brave in the middle. Um, do you want to shout out the car? We'll get the microphone over to you. Tell Sorry? The Red 3 Series. Tell us everything. Let, let's get the microphone over to you. Did you see the Red 3 Series? It better not be a 320 diesel or something. <laughs> uh, it started off as a 318i. What but is it now? Good. It's got a Commodore engine in it. What? <laughs> and it's, it's got a wide body kit on it. What it's have you done? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you just build this specifically for this event? Uh, no, not really. It's gone to a couple other shows around Sydney. It's won some prizes. And it it runs. It works. It's barely, barely. Okay. Barely. Why have you put Why have you put the Commodore engine in it? I mean, the BMW engine probably got more power. I mean, it makes decent power, but the body kit was a bit aggressive to have a little four cylinder in it. Yes, yeah, so you needed something <laughs> an engine that matched the body kit. Basically, <laughs> that's always the right way around to do it. <laughs> <laughs> It has brakes as well. It has brakes as well. So it can stop. It can stop. It, it, do you feel like you finished the project or is this one of those, it's never finished? No, it's finished. It's finished. I mean, and are you happy? Yes. That's, <laughs> it's not, that took a long it, time to get human. out. Yeah. Well, look, I'm sorry that we didn't see it. I feel like we're now going to have to go and have a look after this. Can you, can you rev it or will it blow up? 
No, it, it can rev. You can rev. Let's yeah. go do that. We'll have a little rev battle after this with something else. So um, thank you so much for bringing thank it you. and for being brave enough to uh, to submit it to Tony. Uh, anyway, let's let's move on. I say thank you so much for all of you that came down today. There was an insane turnout. So the Stash guys absolutely nailed it with this with this Cars and Coffee event. And uh, it was awesome to meet so many people from the community. So yeah, whatever you bought, it was great to see. And, and thanks to those who were brave enough to submit the cars. But we've had a pretty awesome day. We arrived into Sydney uh, late last night. Um, so I'm going to tell my favourite story. Oh, not again. I've heard it 15 <laughs> times today. But go on, off you go. I arrived at the hotel. I had a lovely little dinner, didn't we? You, we had did. a, you had a meze platter. Weird choice for Sydney. I had a Singaporean curry. Even weirder choice. Um, I lost because I had food poisoning all night. So... <laughs> I've been up most of the night curled around the loo. Um, but then we got up early, smashed a coffee, and went up to Chrome Temple. Does any of you, do any of you know about Chrome Temple? Relatively new setup up in the northern beaches. That is a lovely area, isn't it? Bloody yeah. hell. Um, and they're sort of uh, almost a one-stop shop. So a big part of what they're doing is almost an investment fund, right? So the reason we wanted to bounce some thoughts around this is cars now are becoming insanely expensive, and we found out here in Australia more so than ever and of course, there are opportunities to invest in things like that Countach, that RS. They kind of get to a point where they just seem to keep going up. And therefore, people with lots of money, um, like 365BB man, uh, try to invest in them like their art or watches or whiskey and things like that. So a big part of what Chrome Temple do is basically have a fund, just like a private equity fund. You can just lump money in. They buy cars that hopefully go up. And then, fingers crossed, they give you returns. Now, as enthusiasts, that probably seems a bit weird to us, right? Because we want to drive cars. We're buying cars to drive. If you're just lumping money in, cars come and go. You have no real control over it. It seems odd. But are you encountering more and more people that are calling you up or speaking to you or collectors that you don't think actually even like cars that much? Well, firstly, I lump a load of money into a business. All I seem to be doing in a minute is losing money. Because well, you're in the, the, well, the business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, no, people don't really... Even your top end guys, they're coming to you because they they want to drive stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's a part of the car that we don't see, right? Mm. We're all in here because we like driving stuff. We like buying stuff. And delivery mileage seems odd to us. And look around this room, you go, oh, that must be amazing. But as I say, it's a, it's a big part of the world. Um, but they, they are doing more than just the investment side, I suppose. They've got a whole sort of community that they're building. Yeah. They had some pretty cool cars. And we took out, uh, one of the guys there was a McLaren Elva and a CLK Black Series. Yep. I mean, couldn't be two more different cars. We end up in a bit of a loop and a bit of a drive. So ha I'll ask you first, how was the CLK Black Series? I liked it, mate. <laughs> what, what people what, seem surprised that? by that. It... I, I wasn't shocked in the sense that I knew it's the kind of car that you probably would like, but I was surprised by how much you seem to like it. Because yeah, you but... don't like old stuff, mate. So what's the difference? Well... I wouldn't buy one, especially at the money that they are, but I just like the characteristics of it. It's like an old-fashioned muscle car, German muscle car. You didn't find the gearbox slow? It was terrible. Yeah. Steering was like driving a bus. <laughs> it was the way, you yeah, know... You would have liked that. <laughs> yeah, the, the brakes barely worked. But because it was that bad, it had some really... had, like, a lot of character. So when I go on about old cars, 365BB, and you go in saying a load of crap, crap no, I, useless... I, 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 I was, I was nice to him. You were nice to him, actually, to be yeah. fair. Um, it's because he's rich and you want to be his friend and sell him some cars. Um, you know, you you seem to admit that some cars have character, and that's what I'm on about. You know, Chat and Shadali, this beautiful car right behind us, I'm never going to tell you it's the fastest thing around the Nürburgring. I'm never going to tell you it's better than a 430 Scuttle, better than a Pista or a Speciale, but it's the character, it's the personality, it's the charm of the car. So are you admitting that you're starting to see some of these older cars, whilst they might be crap and expensive to run, do have something about them? No. Oh. <laughs> if I could get that bug to bite me and kill me now, I would. But you just said that you did. So well, that well that one. But there's not many times I get in them and I go, mate, I'm just over old cars. You're not. You will not change me. But there's that's okay. Just to tease some upcoming content. That's the second, if not third, old car you've driven this week that you've gone. I quite liked it. There was there was one other, but that wasn't really old. 2010. Well, then it's, it's what age is the CLK Black Series? Same age. It's not yeah. that old. Okay, okay, fine. So you're saying, oh, it's always a moving bloody landmark with this guy. So that's terrible. Oh, <laughs> I give up. Um, anyway, well, I drove the McLaren Elva. 
Equally shite. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm joking. So it's one of those obviously windscreenless, roofless cars uh, alongside the V12 Speedster and the Monza. I would have thought stupid. I didn't really like the V12 Speedster. It was a DBS that was at all. Oh. Um, the Elva is cooler because it's way more supercar. It's super wide. It sits really low. I didn't appreciate that it's built off its own sort of platform. Shares some componentry and, and powers up with the Senna LM. So it's 800 kilo. Oh, sorry, 800 horsepower, 1100 kilos pretty nuts um but obviously no windscreen so you're just like ah the whole freaking time but it has this kind of wind deflector that pops up at the front so up to 120 or something like that kilometers out, you can have this little wind deflector which does help um but did it help that, that it genuinely, genuinely helped it right. genuinely made a huge difference so you could drive it with no helmets and have a bit of a conversation and we went up to this lookout point because of your speed limits here in australia we weren't exactly driving fast uh, so we're cruising around and we saw this massive lizard didn't we well it wasn't a lizard it was called a uh... guana Goana, 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 Goana. That's fun to say, isn't it? Anyway, so Goana, um, and I then realised how exposed to the elements I was, and that this lizard could jump in the in the car at any moment. Um, but I appreciate the Elva more than the two, so I've just got to tick off the Monza now. But but it was still it was a pretty wild experience. So we've got to shout out Chrome Temple. They were pretty awesome, and as I say, interesting what they're doing in this investment space. Put your hands up. If you could invest, let's say, in an F40 for $200. Really? You, you wouldn't like to own a tenth of an F40 or a one billionth of an F40 for $200. But they want the whole car, mate. They don't want, like, a little bit of flake of paint. Yeah, but really? imagine you could be down at the bar and oh, hello, Sheila. <laughs> I own this car and slide across a little piece. But you don't. We well, just put two hundred dollars towards it. A bit of it. It's like yeah, you, it's like you, a tank of fuel. No, it's like when you you know when you date a bird in the 1980s and you gave her a star. You remember that? You could buy a constellation. No. You don't remember that? No. Maybe that was a 2000s thing. I gave up right. on Lady Stars. Any of you know uh, that? Um, anyway, uh, as I say, it was an awesome day and another part of this wicked adventure. We are flying bright and early tomorrow to Perth. We've got a load of cool stuff lined up with the Lee Collection and a few other bits and bobs, so we still have many adventures ahead on this trip. Uh, but let's move on to the Q&A. Always, always our favourite. I hope lots of you have been thinking of some juicy questions. The juicier, the better. We like them really aggressive at these live events. We want them to be controversial. The more controversial they are, the more higher rated... Uh, you're going to get edited out, uh, but that's fine. And don't forget what we said at the beginning. We need a female question. If we don't get one, you don't get to leave. We lock the doors. Um, that sounds creepy. Anyway, uh, hands up for the first question, please. We will be getting the microphones over to you. Be brave. Someone's got to have a question. There we go. Oh, there we, we got go. a female got a question lady. first. Flying. Where's the microphone? She's straight in. I love this. Uh, there we go. Nice and loud, please. Um, will we see more content with Twiggy in it? Will we see more content with my dog, Twiggy? Yes, I think we will. So... Long story short, to share a lot of my personal life, um, since baby arrived, obviously quite hard to manage dog and baby. Uh, and so Twiggy's been staying with my parents quite a lot. Uh, and then obviously I've been traveling quite a lot. Uh, but I think next year we're going to see a slight change in some of my content. And Twiggy's going to Twiggy's gonna be at the center of that. Um, she's been missing the adventures. Uh, she's been wanting to get in the supercars. So yeah, Twiggy's coming back. I'm aware the female audience like Twiggy. So I've got to up that female demographic. But yeah, well, you couldn't have Jackson. And even in the studio, I'd be scared. Tony's dog is the size of Tony. It would, I mean, I'd be terrified. It'd be quite funny to have him in the podcast when he's just sitting there, staring, sort of just, you know, death staring people. But he would, yeah. That's yeah. what he'd do. He'd just sit there looking at you all. Thinking, <laughs> Judging you. Thinking, I mean, that'd be dead. <laughs> the bug would be gone in a It'd second. It'd be dead, mate. Yeah, gone. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, thank you. We've kicked off with a female question. I love it. We can have more, by the way. That doesn't mean you're off the hook. Uh, next question. Some more hands up, please. Uh, we'll make our way across to the side here. There's a green shirt just in the middle. Uh, so have either of you got a story where you've been to car? Where we've been to car? Yeah. Oh, I think we have many stories one way or another. Let's think of some good ones. Uh, uh, mate, you know, the last time I crashed a car, I hit a skip. <laughs> <laughs> I was about 18. Fairly big crash. I was in a, an old E36. No, not a 30. What was the one before the 36? One of them. 30. I had a 325. I was about 18. Thought I was the lariest lad in the world. I had my friend with me. I went flat out around this blind corner on the wrong side of the road. And a van was coming the other way. And I had a choice to hit the van or the skip. And I hit the skip. I completely wrote the car off. My mate nearly went through the screen. It's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a picture of his head in the screen. It was like quite a bad crash. Yeah. I completely... <laughs> 
You loved it, didn't you? I uh, did, yeah. yeah. But because I was young and, and I was a bit stupid, I literally just thought, quick, get out and run! Because I didn't think I had any insurance, but I did, was insured on that one. But you had, had you nicked that car? That no, no, I didn't no, nick no, that. No, I bought that one my own money. £1,500 I paid for it. Bloody Bastards. hell. Yeah. But uh, that was that's the only big crash I've had. In all that time, so I've done quite well. You've done very you well. You saw mate. my driving. You freaking hell, yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think I've ever been a car. I've had like little bumps. I had that bump in the eight twelve GTS. That was a bit of a larry one. Well, you crashed your four C in the van. No, the van backed into the four C. He tries this all the time. He thinks it's hilarious. Oh, the van he did. He thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> the thing is, if you see the damage, you would, it's not possible. I'd have to be like the lift or maximal you to like somehow must do that have had a crash, or at least your driver the must have had a crash GTS. at one point. Well, my show for, uh, yeah. Yeah, he bumped into a few Rolls Royces on the way to school. It must have. Um, so, yeah, I haven't had a big bin. I, I had an 812 GTS press car, and I took it down to my parents, and I was give, you know, giving it last. Thinking, Here we go, you have a lovely day filming. Put up to a T junction, and a woman came flying into the T junction on the wrong side of the road and smashed it. Good one, your fault then. No, so I, 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 don't think I've, I don't think I've been the car. Yeah. God, touch wood. Uh, anyway, uh, next question. Hands up. There was someone just behind you, I think. Yeah, just on your left. There we go. Well, I'm fuming about this. Bugs come over with me now. That bug is destined to kill us. Hi, mate. You guys don't really talk about Japanese cars too much, but if you had to pick top three Japanese cars, what would they be? Top three Japanese cars? But we don't talk about them because they're shit. <laughs> More, basically. <laughs> um, Civic Type R, new Civic Type R. Yep, I'd agree with you. Flipping hell. I've agreed R34 with you. GTR Skyline. R34? Yeah. You're just doing that for the... No, it's the only one I've driven. Oh, right. It's the only one I've driven. I like it. But, yeah, I don't think I've driven an R35, like so I think yeah. it was mega. Um, what's the third one? Civic Type R is a good shout. Uh, Subarus, the old Subarus were oh, good. Oh, 22B. Just all the big Larry stuff, basically. Yeah. Anything worth a million pounds. Um, yeah, 22B, R34 Skyline, Civic Type R. That's my top three. There were many when I was growing up as a kid. I had, I had loads of them. I had Subarus. I don't know if you get them over here. The Nissan GTR Pulsers. Did you get them over here? Yeah, I had one of them. I blew the gearbox up on that, actually. Blew the synchros up. And then set fire to it and done an insurance job. I should have said that. <laughs> Probably should have said that, no. Jack, edit that out. <laughs> I genuinely did. Chop it, Jack. Chop it. Chop it, Jack, please. It's between us 150 people and I'm the other side of the world, so I'm fine. Yeah, it's quite funny, wasn't it? Yeah, that was quite good, yeah. It's <laughs> an old story. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, what, what, what's your number one JDM car? Go on. Uh, I've got an Evo 8. Of course you yeah. Oh, that's a good car, an Evo. His number one's the one he's got. Evo 8, Tommy Mackinnon? No, it's an Evo that's 8. Saying, no, no, I'm saying, I'm, oh, sorry, sorry, I wasn't slagging off the 8. I was just oh. saying, I think I would go Tommy Mackinnon. So when I had all my Subarus when I was a kid, the Evo was always a bit more money than the Subaru. Okay. And I just couldn't quite stretch to it. But yeah, back in my day, it was the... the, the you know, the Evo 6 was the car to have. Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. For sure. Uh, anyway, thank you for the question. Always good to know. There was there was a big JDM scene today out there, wasn't there? So appropriate. Uh, okay, next up, uh, hands in the air, please. Making our way back across the uh, corridor. We'll go to the blue shirt in the middle first. Um, so obviously cars watch it together pretty nicely. Um, are there any, what, sorry, what's your favourite watch? Moment? Oh, great question. Um, could be forever to answer, if I'm honest. I always sort of float between Tag and Omega. Um, there's a handful of both that I kind of really want. I still go mad for the Apollo edition. It came out during Drive the World, actually, which sort of followed me around. Um, also the 007, the last Seamaster 007, I think. So a couple of Omegas. Um, I like all the cheap tags. So like the early Formula Ones from like the 80s, uh, I would have a happy hat. They did an all pink one. They did an all pink one, which was, um, he's not paying attention, thank God, uh, which is really nice. Um, you can pick them up for a few hundred quid. And uh, a Seiko Rowing Blazers, what I'm looking for as well. They did a co uh, collab in the UK, which was Seiko and Rowing Blazers. What, you, uh, you, I, know you, I know your deal with watches. Is there any watch that you think, oh, I'd like to have one of those? I'm not, I'm not a big watch man. I've got a couple, but Rolex. I've got a couple any of Rolex. Rolex. Is the Rolex man still here? There was a Rolex still, yeah, at the back. There you go. Let me speak to him after this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, thank you. Good question. Cheers. Thank you. Just behind you, there was a, somebody with a hand up. Yeah, we'll make the pass the microphone back all the way to the back. Thank you. Do, 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 but you literally do, 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 do. don't care that this thing's laying rolling around on the floor, do you? Okay, you can't just, give a chance. It's just like a fly. There's a young lady there. She's not screaming or anything. And there's mate. another one there. Yeah, they couldn't get, mate. It's just literally that's Mate, I'm like genuinely a, it's like close now. I know, sketching me out too. <laughs> what even is it, mate? It's huge. I think I saw fangs on it earlier. 
It's called a cockroach? That's not a cockroach, is it? I think it's a snake. Why is it? But why is it though? No one knows, mate. Anyway, 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 can we get distracted? Come on. Sorry, there's a question at the back, please. We're going through buying your first supercar right now. Oh, God. First supercar. New or old? Um, I'd say if you had, say, 100 to 150,000 pounds, so. We well, just get a hot hatch here. <laughs> in, in well, you won't get a supercar here. 100 to 100,000 pounds, new supercar. New. Ooh. Cayman GT4. Oh, so I guess you mean new or used for that money, yeah. Can't get, you can't get one here. You can't get a GT4 here for that money, can you? 100,000? No. No. 300,000. 300,000. Which is £150,000, Australia... though, to be fair. So it's within his budget. Okay. Just about. Is it, are you, are you talking £100,000? Pounds, pounds. Sterling. Yeah, it's said £150,000. Pounds, pounds sterling. sterling. UK <laughs> currency, Tony. <laughs> Cayman GT4. No. For me. <laughs> How about that? Jaguar F Type R. Oh, <laughs> next question. <laughs> Sorry. Can, we, can, we, is can, not we, can we move on to the next question, please? <laughs> Thank you. Just next to you there. Thank you so much. There's a Tiny. Say yeah. hi. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny, impressions of Australia. Go. Uh, yes. Shit hole. Uh. <laughs> Full on. I mean, this, I'm in here doing a podcast, trying to look after you all, and there's fucking something trying to eat me. <laughs> <laughs> Could you... What would be your favourite city so far? We still have Perth left, but out London. of... London. London, OK. <laughs> out of Melbourne? Gold, oh, here. No, Gold Coast. Sydney. Uh, Sydney, yeah. So far, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You guys get a bad rep outside of Sydney, you know? And actually, some of you even today will be like, Sydney's a shithole, because um, you live outside of it. But... For us, I think it's the closest we get to a big international city vibe, and that's not to slag off any other parts, but Gold Coast, obviously, it's just retired people going to sleep. Um, <laughs> Melbourne has its own vibe, but it's a little bit too edgy. It's a bit of a Shoreditch kind of city, if that means it's, it's just a bit too edgy, whereas Sydney is just like, it feels like big city yeah. European international vibes, which we This feels the closest to London, essentially. Yeah, this, I guess. City, which, for sure. I can understand why that's not always attractive, but, but we've liked that. And then, yeah, Tony hasn't experienced Perth yet, so... <laughs> That's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, anyway, OK, a uh, few more questions, please. We'll start making our way forward. Uh, just here with the glasses and the green jacket. Thank you. This bug just loves us, mate. Where's it over yours? Oh, yeah, got... Hey, guys, um, since you're in the country full of uh, dangerous creatures, what's the most dangerous car that each of you have driven? Oh, easy. Oh, man, that's quite easy. Go on, what's yours? Pista. A Pista, yeah, 480 Pista. Uh, cold tires. Yeah, you yeah often say that. I think it is a bit Larry. I, I'd say F12 TDF. Yeah, F12, I think they're similar. Yeah, very similar. TDF yeah. just wants literally wants to kill you in laughs when it does it. Yeah, Pista I think is more like your but yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, it's more like Karate Kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally, it's just like you yeah. know, it's just all in a split second, like something that happens so fast. What was the punch? What's it called the Bruce Lee like? Tsh, like you just don't see the piece to coming, and then it's like dead. Yeah. Where the TDF is like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, yeah. So yeah, and they're both death what traps. About, what about dangerous in terms of shit boxes? Oh, three sixty Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh you know, the, the worst thing is when you all laugh. He loves it. He dines out on it. He thinks, right, I saw that. That one goes down well. I'll do that a few more times. Yeah. These were pizza everywhere we go. You've got to stop encouraging uh, Oh, dickhead. Uh, um, okay, uh, let's move on. A uh, couple more questions. We'll come. There's one in the middle here with the black shirt. Um, is this the man who'd never been to, never heard of us before? Ah, oh, nice to see you. Has it been all right? He's going to tell us now. Yeah, I probably put my foot in it by saying that, didn't I? Yeah, bit. so it's the first time I've actually seen you guys or heard of you guys until he dragged me along. We're so sorry. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> I said we don't offer refunds. Uh, I was going to say I want more money back, but no. Yeah. What's your um, favourite Australian car if you were to pick one? So this is the thing, the Australian car scene, we've been trying to really get into, you know, because of, I guess, our audience maybe a bit more what I do on the main channel than, than the podcast, people always just want to recommend or promote European stuff, or at least, you know, hey, I've got a GT4 RS, or hey, I've got a... Which is great, and that's amazing, but it means people sometimes hold back on the Australian stuff. We went somewhere last week, um, uh, and somebody was trying to promote some super rare... Someone, we were talking to somebody, Josh, we were talking to you about it, or... Anyway, this kind of crazy something-something rare Brock 
uh, what was it, Josh? A what? Blue, blue Meanie. Meanie yeah. Blue Meanie? Anyone know what a Blue Meanie? Yeah, they were nodding. He called it a Volvo. Oh, so I thought it was a Volvo. The bloke was fuming. We need education. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, don't be like that. The Volvo's better than that pile of shit. <laughs> Honestly, we were with the kind of crowd that could have turned on us quite yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was getting a bit worried. I was turning around, saw this guy, be like, don't you know what that <laughs> is? Um, we need education. We, we need yeah. the educating. I think, you know, we got a glimpse of stuff through Top Gear and stuff. I've experienced a few bits and bobs, but we need education. We actually, I think, have liked some of the race car stuff. So any of the Bathurst stuff we've been lucky to see over the yeah. last few weeks, that is, we've all gone, like, we've both gone, like, yeah, that, that looks cool. The road car stuff we don't tend to get. Somebody else here came with, like, a... Or they were going to bring a Commodore and it broke down or something like that. It looked so shit. I was like, thank God. You didn't bring... I just, I, but I just don't get it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just, but he was like so proud of it. If you're here, I'm so sorry. But I mean, like, so we, just, we need educating. We need educating. And we'll be, we'll be back to do that, I think, won't we, Tony? Well, well, Australian cars must be bad if you say this shit because you're so nice. You don't know, say anything like that. That's really bad, that car. We'll be determined to be pretty yeah. strong, I think. Um, anyway, ne next question. Thank you, by the way, for sticking around, mate, and not leaving. Uh, just behind you, a few rows back. Oh, no, boy. You forgot about a very important Australian made car, the Brabham BT62. What if you had the opportunity, would you jump at it to take it for a drive? Uh, one million percent. I was lucky enough to be up close with the Brabham when it launched at Goodwood in 2018, 19, something yeah, like that. 2018, I think it was. Yeah. So. What's it doing? What's the oh the bug's right under you, mate. The bug is right under you. That mate, go on, go on, kill it. The size of that thing. It's quite friendly to be It's fair. got for like fur and everything. We really need to stop. Pick it up. We should pick it up. We need to stop looking at the bug. Um, uh, yeah, the Brabham I'm obsessed with. I mean, I, you know, being an F1 nut, obviously the Brabham name is so iconic. I think it has always looked cool. I believe there's a road registered Brabham somewhere. I think maybe in New yeah, Zealand. Instead of the Okay, fine. I think I think that's what the right going version was. So. Fair enough. Well. Yeah, I would definitely, I would love to have a go. That's, you know, proper track weapon. I mean, we'd have a ton of fun in that, wouldn't we? You'd have to go into something like that. Yeah, I'd pile into a wall probably, but... Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. Is it worth it's a few okay, quid, it's, a, it's, a, it's an automatic, you can flip... Is it worth a few quid, that yeah, car? it is, over a million dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be a big crash. It would be. <laughs> yeah. Very cool, though, and you're right, often overlooked as a bit of Australian, Australian uh, flag waver. Uh, okay, last couple of questions. It'd be great if we got one more female one, but we have what yeah, we have. Yeah, come, so. come anyway, on. Anyway, just, just to your on. left there. There's a couple more over there. Come on, girls. Uh, now, listen, when you're buying a car, have you ever bought a car and been nervous about telling your partner that you've bought the car? <laughs> do, do you mean me or his wife? <laughs> so, uh, I have a very good scam in my household and my life because this is what I do for work. <laughs> um, so, often I, I just get to the point where, like, I'm just like, oh, I'm... She's like, what are you doing today? I'm like, oh, I'm picking up the new car. And she's like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm picking up the GT3. So like, what, what GT3? I'm like, oh, I told you, I'm getting a GT3. <laughs> she didn't tell me. And I just let her assume it's like it's a sponsor thing or something, or like it's a loan. But to the point where I got so good at it, when the Abarth 500E loan turned up for a week the other day, it was there and she went and she went, oh, have we bought this? I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a cunning plan. Um, so, yeah, I just roll with it. I mean, freaking hell, I'm here in Australia with a 10-month-old baby. My wife is the most understanding woman in the world, so... You're here with a baby? Where is it, then? No, no, I said, I have... I... Oh. Not with me. I'm I haven't like... said it all week. <laughs> Stick it out. <laughs> I think you would have noticed. Done well. It's you in would... your luggage. I think you would have noticed. Yeah, so you're flapping now, gonna say, Can we just notice, everyone, by the way, the bug has made its way to the front of the audience. They are freaking out, people. <laughs> they are freak... Oh, he's brave. Oh, this well is a Bushman. Done, boy. Steve Irwin's got it. Steve Irwin's got it. <laughs> oh! Oh! Not near the RS, please. Um, so, yeah, ha have you... Tony's he's a... picked it up with his hands. Flipping hell. He's a pig farmer. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to have that for dinner. Tony's... <laughs> Tony's uh, been lucky enough to not really ever have the pressures of the missus at home giving you slack because he just, just does what he wants. Yeah, literally, yeah. yeah. Oh, have you... Billy. I, I mean, I, was, I would ask you the question, but you just no. do, do whatever, don't you? No chance. Shut up, darling. It's my car. Well, just just shut up. Yeah. I'll just start that phone. It's 2023. So you should not it. tell your. Yeah. Excuse me, darling. <laughs> do you mind if I buy this car with my own money that I've worked really hard for? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing? Is that a thing? 
I think you can. Do you know do what the real, I'll tell you a story, right? Because we always get this with blokes that come and buy cars of us that have got absolutely no bollocks at all, right? They come in the showroom. Oh, yeah, I really, really love it. And just before they pulled the trigger, they go, oh, I must speak to my wife. So haven't you spoke to her? Oh, no, 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 I must speak to her. Not, not uh, can I have some insurance, get the insurance, the insurance quote. It's, oh, I better check my wife to make sure I can have this. You've come 200 miles to look for a car that you really like, but you don't know if you can have it. Do you, do you remember my the 540C situation? It's flapping. So when we when I bought the McLaren 540C, we've told the story a little bit before, but we've been in the showroom in McLaren in London. I went there just to like have a chat with them. Ended up signing paperwork to buy a car. <laughs> 134,000 pounds oh, later. Bullied it. Literally told me, like, come on, do it now. It's gonna yeah. go. You're gonna miss it. Um, <laughs> so uh, <Yeah. laughs> We walk out, it's in nice, it's a really nice part of London, and we walk down to the traffic lights, and I'm at the traffic lights, and I go, Tony, what, Tony, what have I done? Tony, I can't afford, I can't afford a McLaren. Yeah, yeah. I called my dad first. Yeah. And my, my dad's like, well, you're an idiot. Uh, and then I, then I did call Vicky, my wife, and I think I... I she I, wasn't your wife then. And she wasn't. I don't think no. I asked, but I think I just said, oh, we're screwed. Yeah, I think it was... She was like, literally, barely your girlfriend. Like, you... To be fair, I think I probably showed off at that point. I put like, oh, babe, I bought a McLaren today. What have you been up to? <laughs> literally, yeah. yeah. I gave it large, but inside I was freaking out. Uh, anyway, great question. Mike, last two questions. Uh, oh, there's loads now. This, I know, it's always the way. Come to the front just here with the blue shirt, and then final question at the front here on the front row. Thank you. Sam, what, what's the podcast going to look like after 2030 <laughs> or 2035? We'll be sponsored about, by Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> be able to talk about the size of the fire or... or yeah, what? exactly. Yeah, just things melting. Um, we've spoken about a lot, so I guess there's a lot that we'll be discussing when we get back. Australia, for us, has been a fantastic case study into the future of mobility because it seems like you guys are leading the way in anti-EV movements. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. great. Um, but having said that, unfortunately, I don't think you will stop uh, the change. Uh, look, fundamentally, it's going to be multiple solutions, isn't it? Like, we're, we're never going to get to a scenario where this room won't exist. Um, I think, realistically, in the cities like Sydney, you will see more electric cars. It will happen. Are we, we're just going to have more stuff to slag off. You know, that's fundamentally it, isn't it? I yeah. mean, we're going to have more stuff to talk about. Or they get good. They'll get better. Yeah. And like, you know, I like EV products now. Tony is starting to at least come around to the fact that some elements of them can be good. We're all aware that until the infrastructure is a thing and battery technology changes, they're not realistic in our lifestyles, especially here. Um, synthetic fuels, you know, we're big fans of that, but it's never going to scale up to solve all of our issues. Hydrogen is on the way. I mean, there'll be so much to talk about. By 2030, we're going to be talking, every week there's going to be a new technology. You know, we're desperately trying to invent one so we can become really rich. Um, but yeah, I think, I, I actually think it's exciting. I know it feels daunting and weird that we don't know what the future holds. I actually find it exciting that there's going to be new technologies. Ferrari's creating hybrid this or the last of the great NAs. Like, I think we've got a lot of things to be positive about. Um, and the fact that you guys, I mean, we've told this a few times before, maybe on the last episode, we were in Melbourne in an Uber and there was an advert promoting the use of natural gas. Uh, I've never heard a, com a country promoting raw materials on the radio. It was like, how does your fridge work? How do your lights work? Natural gas. Save Australia, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's exactly what it's, we what couldn't believe it. What is this? You know, um, yeah, that's you know that would not fly in the UK. So yeah, we've got a long a long way to go. So let's wait and see. Anyway, last question, just down here, front front row. Um, the rest of your females, you got away with it. Uh, would you swap your the purple M3 Touring you got right now for your black one at home? Ah, uh, yes, great question. So uh, M3 Touring is what we've been driving the last few days. L loaned to us very nicely by BMW Australia. Oh, there's a story I really want to tell, but we're going to save it for next week's episode. For those of you at home, we'll, we'll mention it quickly once we've finished recording. I think you love the spec. You like a black on black on black car, don't you? Yeah. So you, the purple and ivory, that doesn't do it for you at all? Well, the seat's all right, I suppose, but no. <laughs> that hasn't got privacy glass. It's got stupid silver wheels. It's not for me. Oh, I, I like love that, that spec. Well, of course oh, you do. Oh, my God. I'd have that. I've fallen in love with that car. I've got a green Porsche. By the way, a few people you said to me in this audience today... Don't let Tony bully you. 
Your Don't car's a lovely. Don't only bully you. That's <laughs> what you do week in, Keep week out. Keep him a good eye on him when we get back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting food poisoning upstairs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I adore that spec, but he's a, he's boring. Black on black on black on black. It's so dumb. Resell black, mate. Resell black. <laughs> Always yeah. get your money back. Who's going to buy a purple car? It'll be stupid or green one. Me. Uh, uh, so four out of 150 people. Good shit. <laughs> Anyway, good question. Thank you so much. And and that is it. Unless any of you females want to slide in. Oh, there's a woman at the back. Yes. Can yeah, we pass the microphone on. back? You're an absolute hero. We love you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> microphone's on its way. Elevator music. <laughs> and pressure's on. Hi. Just curious if you think um, the wedding day should come first or the Porsche before they go electric. <laughs> <laughs> The wedding day or the naturally aspirated Porsche? I mean, I just know the why car. you're asking it, but yeah, <laughs> you've asked it at the wrong event. I'm so sorry. Because you could get married in a car. Like, that's the thing. It's like, well, just get. Be, he's, it's his twin. It's that, like that. What? You're getting married to the twins? No. What? <laughs> what? I missed. What? The car would be theirs, like the two. So it's I've got to follow in my Mazda, and them two go in the Porsche. Uh, the okay, rule. there's not enough seats. No. Uh, I mean, you could tell the twin to just wait because you're getting married to his brother. <laughs> I mean, you could just say, "Sorry, mate, it's not your moment." <laughs> the only thing I will say is a lot easier to get rid of a car than it is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and cheaper. <laughs> yeah. And on that note. Oh, oh. There we go. Thank you so much. Let's stick up for God. Tony's off. Don't get Tony going on marriage. Uh, anyway, thank you so much to all of you for uh, for coming down today. It's been absolutely amazing. You've put up with the awfulness that is Sorry. Mr. Tony from Craftwood. Anyone that he's offended, we don't do refunds, so I do apologise um, for all the females. Again, I apologise. Uh, for all the children, I apologise. Uh, huge thanks to Stash for, for hosting this incredible uh, event in this space. They've really done an amazing job. As I say, no point in me promoing. They don't need it, but I guess attend their next event if you're local. Uh, shout out to Latham Still Doors again for the sport uh, BTG5 just a shout out once again for discounts if you're in Australia for the UK and you need that security um, and stay seated audience because we'll tell you the funny story with the M3 uh, and then we'll wrap up our event but for now give yourselves a round of applause thank you so much